Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Color Connection with Amber. In this episode, I'll share new ways to use Altenew Artist Marker Refills and your alcohol inks. I'll show you how to use alcohol ink smushing to create soft looks and introduce creative cutouts into the design process to create some unique looks. Let's get started. Nicole Watt from our video design team is hosting the August 2020 Inspiration Challenge and she's provided a gorgeous color palette for us. I translated this into alcohol inks with frayed leaf, emeralds, and evening gray all to new artist marker refills. Next, I cut a piece of photo paper down to four and a quarter by five and a half and I'm spraying the back of it with rubbing alcohol. If you have Upo paper, I do find that alcohol inks move better on Upo paper, but I was out, so in a pinch, I'll use the back of the photo paper. You don't wanna use the front of the photo paper because the inks will just absorb right into the paper. So I'm gonna pick up the photo paper so that I can move the ink around, and I have a dual speed heat tool here set on the lowest setting, so I can just move those inks and dry them with the heat tool. Of course, you don't wanna to get too close to your paper. The photo papers and Upo papers are a plastic material and they can melt very easily. But I find if you keep your tool moving and you keep it about six to eight inches away from the paper, you don't get any warping or melting. So it's pretty easy to manage. I do prefer a heat tool over the little manual um, bulb blowers that you have. Um, I find that my hand gets fatigued and I don't get as much airflow as I like with the, with the bulb blowers. Once this is dry, I'll add my second color. Of course, you don't have to wait for it to dry. You will get a little more mixing to your colors if you add your next color while it's still wet. Here I have a water brush and I'm gonna fill this with that rubbing alcohol. So I was gonna pour it in and realized that, that wouldn't work too well, so I grabbed a pipette. So I have a couple of these pipettes. I use one for my alcohol inks and I have another one reserved for my watercolor so that I can re-wet my pans with a drop of water from the pipette. So those are really handy to have in your craft room. And then I'll use that same pipette to add little areas of alcohol to the paper. I like to add alcohol first so that the pigments move more easily. Um, I find this is a little more necessary on the back side of the photo paper um, than it is on Upo paper. Like I said, they, the inks move a little bit better on Upo paper, but again, I'm working with what I have. So just drying this, there's some areas that are really dark. So what I'm gonna do is drop on some alcohol so that I can dissolve that alcohol ink. And so I'm gonna just kind of shake it around, move it around and wash the alcohol back and forth over these darker areas to dissolve that ink. And then I'll go ahead and use the heat tool to move that around. That's gonna help me get a little bit of a softer look and break up those really dark colors. So this is gonna be the more traditional way to use your alcohol inks. And I'm kind of going through this first, so if you're new to alcohol inks, you can see this process. And then we'll move on to some of the new ways to use it. Here, I didn't wanna to add too much of the evening gray, so I put the ink onto my glass mat and I picked it up with that water brush that I have filled with alcohol. That also allows me to add little drops of alcohol directly from the water brush, which is great, so I highly recommend that. So here I've sprayed this panel with alcohol ink again, and I'm just gonna move around this evening gray. So. When you have a bunch of alcohol ink down on your panel, it's really gonna dilute your color, which is what I was going for. I wanted kind of just a smoky background here. And then I'll add on just small drops of the green. I don't want the green and the gray to mix too much because I don't want it to get too muddy. So I'll add just a little bit directly to the paper here. And then we'll do a bit of ink smushing. So here I decided I didn't want the emerald to be too dark, so what I decided to do was try ink smushing. Now, I hadn't done this before, and so I was curious how it was going to turn out, and I absolutely loved it. You do want to be careful when you're spraying your alcohol inks. You don't want to aerosolize them, and you do want to make sure that you're doing this in a well-ventilated room. 
So I just dipped the card into the, the alcohol ink like you would any other ink smushing technique. And here you can see how it's kind of moving and dissolving the ink that was already on the paper. And this was a blank sheet. It creates such a cool pattern, almost like the ocean or waves in the ocean. And I'm going to do one more panel because I really liked this technique. And I'll kind of just put on small areas. So this time I'm not going to drop the whole panel into the alcohol ink. The emerald layer has already dried, so I'll drop on some frayed leaf and I'll spray that with the alcohol. And I'm going to pick up my glass mat to move that around. And I'll go ahead and ink smush those two emerald panels straight into this. And look how beautiful that is. I love the texture it creates when you pull the paper off of the glass mat. It's just so cool. Now I do recommend using a glass mat if you have one when you're doing your alcohol inks for a couple reasons. It's super easy to clean and it's not going to stain your surface. So to clean up, you can spray a little bit of alcohol onto a baby wipe and clean up your surface that way. So here I'm just showing you how soft the ink smush panels are compared to the first two panels I did, which were kind of the traditional way to lay down your alcohol inks. Now, of course, you can get a soft look with the original way too. You just need to use less ink, more alcohol. So I'm just ink smushing on a little bit of the gray and I'll speed this up since you've already seen this process. I will admit I do like the ink smush panels without the gray a little bit better. I think they got a little dark and a little busy with the gray. Um, but of course I did want to have the full color palette in there from the inspiration challenge. So here's the four panels together. And then I started thinking about how I was going to use these panels. So I pulled out some creative cutouts. This is the Moroccan mosaic design and it's a 12 by 12 piece of laser cut cardstock. You can see that I cut out a small portion and I have a huge amount left over. So that'll go back into the package and I just fussy cut out the parts that I wanted. So I've glued this down to the alcohol ink panel with a little bit of Ranger multimedia matte glue. And I thought I was just going to use it as is, but then I thought, well, what would happen if we used it with alcohol inks? So, so I dropped in some Emerald Artist Marker Refill, and then I'm dropping in some alcohol on top of that. And I'll pick it up and move it around, and you're going to see that alcohol ink just absorb right into the creative cutout. Now, I should mention, I really liked the way that this looked in just white on the soft panel. So if you liked it there, just stop there. But this is kind of how I play around with my supplies and come up with new ideas. I kind of just go for it and if it doesn't turn out quite the way I like it, that's okay. So you can see I added a ton of green, more emerald, and then also some gray. And then I decided it was too dark, so I peeled it off. Now because this creative cutout had all of the alcohol ink on it, it was pretty stiff and was e pretty easy to peel off because it was so stiff. Of course, I waited for it to be completely dry. So I have this really dark creative cutout now and I'm playing around with it to see if perhaps I can get a twofer out of that. I didn't love how it looked. I thought it was too busy on the alcohol ink panel, but I do like the way that it looks on white. So I'll set that aside. Now with this panel, I, I, do, I did like it better with the white outline. So once I peeled it off, it had worked as a stencil and left that white outline. For a third design, I have the circled love die here and I'm just gonna use one of the original alcohol panels and put that right behind there. So this I thought was too busy. So I went ahead and cut out, I fussy cut out the creative cutout piece that we made. And I'm gonna make a twofer out of this panel. So this I like so much more on the white background. It's less busy, you have your focal piece. And then here I decided to use the soft piece that I cut out and pair that with the other part of the creative cutout. So now we have three cards. And then I also have those two other panels as well. To glue these panels together, I'll use art glitter glue with a precision tip. And I like the liquid adhesives because it gives me a little bit of wiggle room, especially when I have to line things up perfectly. To aid in that process, I'll put an A2 size piece of Nina Classic Cross Solar White 80 pound into the corner of my score pal. And then I'll go ahead and press the 
um, alcohol ink panel directly on that and that just helps to get everything lined up perfectly without me having to fuss around with it too much. So this is the other card here and I'll just get this aligned and then I'll go just go ahead and glue on the creative cutout piece as well. I used the same glue on the back of the creative cutout piece and again this got really stiff because I used so much ink on this you guys. <laughs> Um, I think I probably would have liked this better if I had uh, not used so much ink, but you know, live and learn. I'll do that next time. So I'm just going to press this right into that fussy cut piece and of course they match perfectly. So for one card I'll use hello and hugs and I'll stamp hugs and kisses in obsidian pigment ink. And for the other card I chose Just Keep Swimming from Whimsical Flowers in Quotes stamp set. You can see that here. And I stamped that in Stays On Ink which is great for non-porous surfaces. It's going to dry a little bit faster than a standard pigment ink. To finish off the cards I'll use Tropical Forest and Seashore enamel dots and I'll mix and match those. And of course I'll have supplies listed down below for you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed these projects today and have learned some new techniques to use with your artist marker refills and alcohol inks, something a little bit different. Let me know what you think of this twofer down below and if it's a technique that you would use. Of course, if you don't have creative cutouts, you could also use your cover dies or any other dies to create a similar effect. I'll have a link to the August 2020 Alt New Inspiration Challenge down below. Be sure to link your projects either through that blog post or by using hashtag Alt New Challenge in order to enter. Let me know what you think down below and I'll see you real soon with more inspiration. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, liking, and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave and I'll see you real soon.